Hey, this is Ellie from Magic Beans, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the top five things you need to know about Nuna car seats. Whether you're shopping for infant car seat, convertible car seat, booster seat, this is the video to watch, and we are very lucky to have Bob Wall with us. He is the global car seat advocate for Nuna Baby. Hello, Bob. Hello, how are you? I'm so good, and I'm really excited to have you with us. Um, Bob literally wrote the book on teaching about car seats in America, and there is virtually no one more qualified to talk to you guys and to us all about Nuna car seats. So, Bob, hi. Hi. Let's talk about the Pippa. Okay, let's talk about the Pippa. There are seemingly lots of Pippas. Um, plethora of Pippas. There's a plethora <laughs> of Pippas, and the I guess the first question I have is, why is a Pippa awesome? It's easy. It's okay. safe and it's easy to use. I mean, that's that when it comes right down to it, that's why it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, it, it's very easy to install no matter what Pippa you use. Um, it's very safe. It tests qu quite well in crash tests that we do. Um, and it, it's easy and it's top of the line materials and FR free. There's all kinds of things that we can toy at that is makes it so awesome. Yeah, I think that install, the, the easy installation is definitely um, something that's great about it. So it has this load leg. The stability and load leg is a plus. Um, and it was it, one of the, Pippa or Nuna is one of the first companies that actually successfully introduced it into the United States um, about 10, 12 years ago. So, uh, so what I did was I, I lowered the load leg, mm -hmm. and then take, took out this, these rigid latches, and then you just click it right in. And it went from red, red to green. Red to green. All right, red to green. And we're using the relaxed base, so now he's gonna take it and lower it to the ground, so that turns from red to green. And he installed these first, holding on to the lower anchors. But this seat also has another adjustment and the other adjustment is you can take it and push it back toward this seat to even get a, a more secure um, install. And also this acts as an anti-rebound positioner in a frontal crash, there's always rebound. Um, now, while that's not as much, you know, really the risk is the frontal part. There's not as much risk from rebound, but it, this does help with the install. That's the big thing with that. Got it. So that was actually really cool. So what you did was you installed. You got to reset it first. You reset it, and, and then you take here and you push, push. it in, push yeah. it in, and yeah. that also takes it away from the driver. Or well, the it, it basically sometimes because these are so low into the seat, there's a, a space or a gap. Mm -hmm. This base allows you to push it in. There's four different settings. It allows you to push it as close as you can get to the seat. Mm -hmm which number one, takes it further away from here, but it also brings it up against here and adds stability. So there are lots of types of Pippas. Um, any general suggestions of how to choose between You know, them? it's all lifestyle. You know, mm -hmm. the, the basic Pippa is safe. Okay, we have a standard base. It does not have all those different adjustments. It has a bubble indicator for the angle, things like that. As you go up in the Pippa series, they all are basically the same as far as how they work. They still go in with the rigid lower anchors. They still, you know, install very easily. They might have different features. The standard base, we then go to the relaxed base, is what we were just messing with here, and it has a little bit more adjustability. The standard base has a leg that just comes down. It doesn't lock going down. It just locks coming up in the crash. That one is a little bit easier to adjust because you unlock it, push it down, put it in place. It's locked either both down and up. This one also goes in and adjusts toward the seat. The other base does not. It's, it's just a lifestyle thing. They're both the exact same as far as installation. This one has just a little bit more adjustability. Got it, got it. And I, the thing, this one, we have here the Nuna Piva Light RX. What mm -hmm. I like about this is that it has a non rethread thread harness. And on. again, lifestyle. This one has a no rethread thread harness. It's the only Pippa that has a no rethread thread harness. So this is kind of our flagship at this point. All right, it has the relaxed base. It has the no rethread thread harness, okay? And it, it's just 
a light, light seat. It's a Pippa Light RX, so it, it's under seven pounds. Got it, got it. So that's, um, so that is the Nuna Pippa. So um, tip number one is to um, get a Pippa because it is easy to install, light, and has all of these great safety features. Now, uh, let, number two, let's talk about the Nuna Urban. Okay, the Urban. Um, well, hold the, on, let me, let me just- Let's let me, go get the Urban. Let's, let's the take urban. this out. All right, so the Urban, when we start talking about that, and then reset this, okay? So let's grab the Urban here. So the Urban is a Pippa of a different stripe, so to say, animal. The difference is the rigid lower anchor that's on the base is now connected to the shell. And what's really revolutionary is it's on the shell and it's still seven pounds. So it comes down out of the shell and it has the angle adjuster underneath here, okay? So it's an easy install. You just point and click and there it is, okay? And that's installed, it's done. So if you are in an Uber situation or taxis or grandma's house or, and you don't have the second base or you don't have a base in one of the cars or you're just out on the city and it's, you wanna get into an Uber quick, this is the way you go, okay? Because it has the same steel bars that are rigid anchors at the bottom with still the lightweight seat. Got now, it. And it comes in a travel system only at this point. So you have the travel system there with you. Got it. So you are, it's going to come with either a Nuna Mix, a Triv, or a Travel. And again, you're on the go, move from the infant car, uh, move from the stroller, click it into the ride chair of the taxi, back and forth, really great for on the go. And to remove it from the from the car, all you have to do is pull on the back here and it removes in one second. So, um, well, that, and like the Pippas, this one expires after 32 pounds. But unlike the other Pippas, this one, you keep using the system that you bought because you now you have a stroller. Mm -hmm. All right, so where, okay, this part is done as far as the car, but when you buy this, you also add the stroller, you get the stroller with it, so now once you're done with this, you still have that stroller to whatever pounds that goes up to. Well, you just let me write into my third question for you is, mm -hmm. so you said 32 pounds, when your kid mm -hmm. hits 32 pounds, they are gonna be done with their any type of PIPA. Correct, right. and, and most car seats, and there's most, a weight limit of 30, 32 pounds, yeah. So, and then, but many kids will, correct me if I'm wrong, will be taller than 32 pounds. Absolutely, you're, they're gonna probably, they're gonna to get too tall for the seat before they get too heavy. They need to keep their head within the shell by about an inch. So you want the top of their head about an inch below the shell, because you wanna keep their head in that shell. And when they're rotating forward, you wanna give them that inch. In case the harnesses are loose, they shouldn't be. But if there's that rotation and the top of their head crests over it, they could injure, obviously you don't want head injury, so you don't want them to hit anything. So. You, want, you usually will outgrow an infant carrier by size as far as length before weight. But there's also practicality, lifestyle. Are you really gonna be carrying a 32 pound no. bit? No, no, no. Right? no. So, so I think again, most parents when 22, 20, yeah. that's when it's gonna feel like you have a seven or eight pound or six or seven or eight pound car seat with a 22 pound kid, that's 30 pounds of weight that are traveling around with you, you may be ready to go to your next stage next car seat. seat. That's so right. let's talk about next stage car seats, next stage car seats for a second. So I note a lot of parents are trying to decide for phase two, whether to get a, um, a Nuna uh, Rava, a Nuna Exec, or even a Rev, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But I think in general, parents are choosing between a Rava and an Exec. In general, um, yes. So any tips or ideas you know, about Again, we go with lifestyle. It's all about lifestyle. You know, these seats have the same DNA, okay? They work the same way. They have the same tension doors, rear facing, a tension door for forward facing. And this one starts, again, you can do rear facing up to 50 pounds. And again, we, we encourage that children are rear facing as long as possible. 
well past 32 pounds. We want them rear facing till at least age two. Many Nuna customers, their three year old, their four year old are still rear facing because it's actually safer. It's safer for really us, even as adults, to be rear facing. It's kind of hard to drive that way. But, you know, when there's a frontal crash, which is a lot, that frontal crash is supported by the back of the seat. So rear facing is definitely safest as long as possible. So now all three of these seats go to rear facing as well. This one goes to rear facing to 50, that one goes rear facing to 50, and the rev goes rear facing to 40. So these are comparable, same DNA. You turn this around after you're comfortable, after they maxed out the seat weight wise, turn it around and it goes to 65 pounds with the harness forward facing. That goes to 65 pounds forward facing as well. So again, same DNA. The Rev will go to 40 pounds, both rear facing and forward facing. That's the limitations on that seat is 40 pounds total. So that one's a versatile to a certain point from rear facing to forward facing. You might have to transfer another child and you say, okay, they want to be forward facing. Again, it's to 40 pounds. These two are to 65. So when you're talking lifestyle, how long is it going to last? Well, now if you want to have it to last a little bit even longer, or you say you have a child that's getting older, then you would have this one because this one stops at 65. The exec goes to 120 as a booster. Got it. So this one you'll use to as a booster. This one has the most longevity. Mm -hmm. um, you can, um, and also this one is more narrow. Only by a little bit. It's more narrow by about an inch. Okay. Okay. So it is a little bit more narrow, and but these go together very well as far as next to each other in a car. I've tested over 200 cars at this point putting these seats in. And even small vehicles at the auto show, I have put these two next to each other and they work very well. Um, it, again, it depends on the vehicle and where the belt paths are and things like that, but it's all about lifestyle here. These seats are all testing very safely. They all meet the same standard. And again, these two are identical as far as DNA. This one just goes a little bit longer. This one, ha they both have the tension doors Blue for rear facing, red for forward. The Rev, it has a tension door as well, and it just goes in one time, forward facing. And if you want to turn it around, it just revolves around. So the third question that I have is about, or the fourth question that I have is, um, a lot of people get either like an exec or a Rava for their um, for their primary car, mm -hmm. but sometimes there's a second car, maybe a grandparent is taking a car on a regular basis and they're looking for a second car seat. Is there a particular uh, Nuna car seat that you recommend or what do you recommend for parents? Well, for you know, I mean, again, it's lifestyle. You know, it, the recommendation is any of the above. Yeah. Okay. So you really have to decide yourself. what. What is it do you need the second seat for? Is it for your grandparents? You know, you just need it for a few trips. It might be the Revol, the Rev. Because, you know, <clears throat> it goes in one time, both rear can facing. Can you show, can you sure. show that? So it goes in, you, you would install it, excuse me, we have our little point of sale thing closed up. So you would put this all the way upright, and it is upright, and you do the tension doors here, and the tether would go over here. So this whole thing would always be installed. You put the lap belt through, all right, you lock the retractor, you put the tether on first over top, then you pull it tight, close this, it's installed forever. Okay, you don't have to turn it around for forward rear facing. So this is great for a grandparent. So then once they say, okay, we wanna turn them around, as long as they're under 40 pounds, you just turn it around and it's installed in the car always. So this may be a good option for a second car. Um, <clears throat> the price point is lower than this, okay? And it's just a little, it's versatile. It's very easy to have in a second vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's easy for loading and unloading the child. So again, this has been a very um, popular seat, um, especially in Boston and New York and the city because they like the 
putting the child in and out. Yeah, it's okay. so, uh, so much easier to look directly at the child than to like have right. to do it from a per 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 perpendicular angle. And the, I guess the question, my last question is, how do you know when it's time to move out of a car seat? And you, how, I guess my question is, how long should a child be in a, um, in a, some sort of child safety seat? And what, and when do you transition? Is there an age? Is there a like stage? Like what's your Well, situation? unfortunately, you know, the law enforcement background, you know, I know that the laws, you know, in, in different states, okay. You know, there may be a law that says they have to be in something till they're eight or whatever. Look, I mean, eight's a good thing for law enforcement because we can actually enforce an age. But when it comes right down to it, <clears throat> when they outgrow these seats, weight and height wise, that's when you need to start looking at the next level. Um, so look, if you've got this seat and they're at 64 pounds forward facing and they're getting really tall, well, this seat, you change it to a booster. You take the harnesses, put it behind the door that's in here. So can you, can you talk about that quickly? So yeah. what do you do? So how so do you turn this into a booster? The way you turn this into a booster is you would take these right here. Now look, now see, I said earlier, we have blue. Okay, let's take and we'll put these on our magnets because we do have magnet holders on these that keep this out of the way on the side. I don't, it's down there somewhere, but there, there it is. is. You got it. All right. And we put this down here, again, magnet, very nice feature. But you notice, blue door is rear facing, red door is forward facing. Well, if you look on the side as well, our angles, blue rear, red forward, purple, we introduce a new color. Purple is booster, because you can also recline this in the booster mode. Oh, wow. And see, look, purple there. See, red, blue, purple. So those were the belt paths. So seat belt, seat belt, seat belt is a booster. Okay, so look, we pull this around, look at the purple. We take all this stuff and we put it behind this door. We load it all up into here. Oh, look at that. Okay. Look at that. All right, so we get rid of this. Oh. I pop all that stuff back in that little Put back area. in here. All right, put this back down. Okay. Do, 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 do. That snaps into there. This snaps under here. And you now have, and you can put this down under here too. And you now have a booster seat. Wow. And right here's where the shoulder, look, on the shoulder belt, purple again. All right, and it's spring loaded. So again, this is where the shoulder belt goes. Lap belt goes through here and it fits just like an adult. So mm. at 60 pounds, 65 pounds, you say, okay, they need a booster. Well, they don't need a booster, they have this. All right, this turns into a booster. Well, this is a super nice booster. And the thing <coughs> I like the, about that, I actually have rarely seen the exec in the booster mode. Mm -hmm. It looks very sophisticated. Oh, it's very nice. You know, yeah. so if you have a seven-year-old and they are complaining about sitting in a baby seat, this doesn't look like a baby seat. No. This looks like very now, modern. Now, as a booster, you can use this still as well, like a leg, you know, like a leg rest. Now, when you put it in booster mode, we want you to use the lower anchors. Mm -hmm. So you hook it in with lower anchors so it doesn't go anywhere. So when the child jumps into the seat, which you know they're going to, and they're gonna put their foot on this. If it's a booster that's not secured, it's gonna fly. So we want them to install it with the lower anchors. That way it's installed in the car, ready to go. The kid, all he has to do is, the child, all they have to do is put the seatbelt around them. So you may not know this, when, if you have an exec, that because you probably use the seatbelt to <coughs> install the exec for the lifetime of your exec, but it does have those latch connectors integrated if you do wanna use the latch. Um, so, and what Bob's saying is you would use those when you'd use this in the booster mode. But we also have... Well, let me move this one. Yeah. Oh, let's go booster to booster. Let's go booster to booster. So you may have a Rava or you have a Rev and you are now moving to a car seat that does not have a booster mode. So you get a booster in itself. Well, um, what's a booster? Why do you need a booster? Well, a booster, it, it basically it makes the child fit in an adult seatbelt correctly. You know, uh, cars are made for adults, period, 
Okay, they're made for adults, and the seat belts are designed for adults. Uh, so the fifth percentile um, size dummy or person, they're fit on them, on their shoulders, their hips. Well, a child, they're not big enough. They, you know, this starts to ride up under their belly. It goes down uh, up over their neck. So a booster makes the adult world fit for them. It's important because this is one of the most underutilized seats in the country. It doesn't matter what seat it is, booster seats are not used very often because the kids get a lot of peer pressure on the playground. You know, you're a baby. It's not a baby seat, okay? It is, all it does is it allows the child to sit correctly in the adult seat belt. Now, this one grows with the child, so this one actually has a place you can actually put your hand under here and make this come, so as their legs get longer, this is a little bit more comfortable for them. Also, if you look at it from the front, and I like raise this, it also raises the sides. It makes the sides wider, makes this go up, and you can make, so as the child grows, they don't just grow up, they have shoulders, so it grows out as well. So it's more comfortable. And also, I imagine it's safer to have this protection oh, on the absolutely. side here. Absolutely. Yeah, we want to keep their head in, you know, inside here. Now, we just passed the, the federal government just passed a side impact um, standard. So 213 is the current standard. We now have 213 A or B, what I'm not sure what you call, but it's 213, and it has a, sta a side impact standard that will be phased in over the next three years. So. That's important to know that because all these seats will start to have to pass that as well, including booster seats. So to keep them you know, secure, to keep their head away from the side, it's, it's great. Now with this booster seat, it has rigid anchors. You know, this is our rigid lower anchors. And you just click it in just like you would, say the Pippa we were talking about, and it stays right there. And then the child jumps in. The belt path on this is red. Okay, it's only got one belt path. And then there's the shoulder belt goes up in here. The lap belt goes down here, which, and you'll notice these arms will keep the belt from going up under their belly. So it's important. This is an important seat that people miss, honestly. Same thing with the exec. I, just like you, I've never seen the exec used in a booster mode. Used. I've always seen children in the harness part. It, I think, you know, soon we're going to see those children hopefully using this as a booster too. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I would probably say that for an exec, if you are, have a RAVA and you are, grad, may, maybe you're in a, in a position where you have a second child and that second child is now graduating from their infant car seat into a convertible car seat and now you need to buy a new seat, you may think that, am I gonna get an exec for my two and a half year old or my three year old? You may wanna get that because again, you're using that from two and a half or three years old only up to eight years old. And so that's like a five years of using uh, of use and then you can always use that exec and use that as a hand-me-down for the younger child. So getting an exec even for that toddler age may be a good idea and we wanna keep them in those harnesses as long as possible. As long as, well. as possible, 65 pounds for these harnesses and then after 65 pounds, they should be going into a booster. Well, those are our top five tips for getting a new in a car seat. Thank you so much, Thank Bob. You for I me. learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot. Um, we have lots more videos on Nuna products, and we're going to put a playlist down below. I will see you at another Magic Beans video.